Wait a minute. Uh, Got to start this off right. Welcome to another Crown and Comments with Cruise Man. I've got my favorite adult beverage here, Crown Royal. Not sure if I'm going to be able to drink it, but we'll talk about that in a second. I've got my MacBook Pro over here. I'm going to pull up my comments that we want to talk about today. Let's see if I can find them here. Okay, got those open. I've got some notes, just some uh, kind of old business I want to go over. First of all, let me welcome you to Crown and Comments. This is something I do usually once a month. It is August 15th, 2022. And this is the first video I've done since I got back from our most recent cruise where I tested positive for COVID and actually uh, came down with COVID. Ricky and I both actually came down with COVID. Uh, we were on a 15-night Scandinavia cruise, and on about day eight, we went to the medical center. They tested us. We both tested positive. We both felt like shit, and um, quite frankly, that's been um, hmm, probably a couple of weeks ago that we actually tested positive. Uh, we were in quarantine for five days, and... <clears throat> At the end of the fifth day, they are, they let us out of quarantine, but there was only one day left in the cruise, so we really didn't feel like doing much. We we were over most of our bad symptoms, but not feeling 100%. And quite frankly, I'm still not feeling 100%. Um, there are some days where I feel really good, but uh, some days not, not so good. So uh, there are some lingering... Uh, symptoms, you might say. Uh, those of you that have had COVID, perhaps you know what I'm talking about. So put in the comments down below. Let me know what your experience was uh, with your COVID experience. Uh, but before, I know somebody's going to put it in the comments about cruise ships. I mean, we have another website and YouTube channel for the cruise industry that we've had for 20 years, cruisereport.com. And so we were actually on an assignment to cover this ship for that YouTube channel and website. And I know some of you are going to say, or somebody's going to put in the comments, because they always do, the old comment about cruise ships are uh, a Petri dish. That's usually the, the term that somebody will like to use. And um, it doesn't explain why millions of people get COVID, you know, over the last few years, a couple of years, millions of people that never went on a cruise. So it can't just be cruise ships. Humanity is a Petri dish, okay? So uh, you take risks anytime you do anything. And uh, fortunately, I think we got a mild strain. This is not, obviously, it's not like the Wuhan or the Alpha or the Delta strain. This was the most likely the BA5 strain, which is the most predominant strain right now. And uh, like I said, our, our bad symptoms were maybe lasted four or five days. Um, and then we have these little lingering, uh, I guess you call it fatigue. Um, this is actually the first alcoholic beverage I've had since I tested positive because I just haven't really felt, I just really haven't felt up to having a drink. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to drink this today. I just went ahead for the video and put it out here as my, my prop. So I just wanted to update you, let you know that. Also let you know that this video is not sponsored by Show Chrome. <clears throat> they did send me this t-shirt. Thank you, Show Chrome. And uh, they have sponsored some videos in the past. They have, I have done some installation videos for them. But uh, I just got the t-shirt out and thought, hey, I'll wear the t-shirt. But the video is sponsored by Cruise Man's maintenance videos. Now, I have maintenance videos for the 2001 to 2022 Honda Goldwing. 
And if you own a Goldwing and you want to save up to $1,000 a year by doing some of these maintenance tasks yourself rather than paying a dealer $150 to $200 an hour for labor, uh, my videos will show you how to do that. And I'll put links in the description down below, and I'm not going to get into any more of that self-promotion. Okay, also, if you're passionate about motorcycles, maybe this is your first time to cr uh, crown and comments. Uh, if you're, but if you're passionate about motorcycles, uh, I would invite you to click that little subscribe button down below and join our family. Right, it's a very rapidly growing network uh, worldwide of motorcycle enthusiasts. I think we're over 45,000 now. We're trying to get to 100,000. So uh, anything you can do to help <laughs> uh, get, you know, we want people to subscribe to the channel. And we appreciate your support. Now, another uh, piece of little news before I get into the comments, like I, I started to tell you earlier, uh, this is something we do about once a month where I take comments that I've received from Facebook or YouTube or emails, and I just read them on here, and I comment, respond to them, and, and then let you comment on those comments. But some old business. Uh, some of you may remember a couple months ago, three months ago, maybe I, I reviewed a, a pressure washer uh, that I have mounted on my garage wall, and I absolutely love it. I've been using it quite a bit, more than I ever thought I would. In fact, I can't believe I went as long as I did without a pressure washer. But uh, they have sent me, that company with Giraffe Tools, has sent me a new pressure washer. It's, it looks identical. It's the same design, but they've made some updates to it. I'm going to be unboxing that later this week, and I'll be kind of taking it apart, disassembling it, and showing you internally what they've changed. Uh, I'm not even sure what it is yet. I know they replaced some pla I think they replaced some plastic parts with some metal parts. I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe they're more durable. Who knows? So we'll we'll take a look at that. Also, uh, I received a package this last week from Pathfinder LED, our friends at SoCal Moto Gear, and they have come out with a brand new fog light uh, kit for the 2001 to 2010 Honda Goldwing. Kind of unusual. You don't see a lot of new products coming out for the previous generation Goldwing. But they did, and they they came out with these, and of course, then the first thing I had to do is find a donor bike locally that I could install them on, and I did. I found a, a new friend, John, who contacted me, I think, through Facebook, I'm not sure, and uh, he dropped his bike off over here, left it with me overnight. I got these. He already had uh, fog lights installed on his 2005, it was a 2005 Goldwing. And I removed his old fog lights, put the, these new ones on, and man, are they super bright. These things are kick-ass. They are really, really bright. So if you've got a 2001 to 2010 Honda Goldwing, uh, you're going to want to watch that video. I'm, I'm just getting ready to go into editing. I've got the video shot. I just have to edit it. So make sure you check that out, because these new fog lights, I was stunned at how bright they are. Really, really nice. I believe they're LEDs. I know they're LEDs. Also, um, just another little piece of old business, the BMW videos that I did a while back, uh, just a month or so ago, uh, did very well. I, I did a review of the BMW K1600 GTL. I also did a comparison video of it to my 2018 Goldwing. I did a few moto vlogs from that BMW, and there were like six videos total where I kind of featured that BMW. And all total, those videos now have over uh, 293,000 views, which is a lot for my channel. That's a lot of views. Um, so, and I think we added like 900 new subscribers from those videos. I mean, it was really a big impact. And so, I've been reaching out to other manufacturers uh, to see about getting other models in here to test and review and do similar videos, similar uh, as far as how I did the review. And uh, the next, hopefully, uh, if everything goes as planned, the next one will be I've got a model coming in later this week, I hope, or early next week. I'm not sure when it'll be here, uh, from Indian. And I will be doing a test ride 
and doing some testing and reviewing of a new Indian model. And my question is, is this going to be a, a, a motorcycle that I would consider as a replacement for my Goldwing? That's an interesting question because I have not ridden a V-twin, uh, not that I've owned, in many, many years. I started back riding on a Harley Sportster back in 2005 and then um, in 2006 got the Goldwing and that's I've been riding Goldwing ever since. But, you know, I'm intrigued by the Indian. I know Don used to have an Indian and I'm going to interview him a little bit about his experience with Indian as part of this video. And so we'll see. We'll see. So if you're a Harley rider or an Indian rider, or if you have an interest in that motorcycle or that brand, um, stay tuned because I should have some videos coming very shortly where I will be featuring one of these Indian motorcycles. Okay, I think that's good. Let's get on to the show and do some comments. Let me see if I can take a drink of this without it killing me. Hmm. It's the first alcohol I've had since COVID. And man, does it burn. Uh, okay. First comment is an email. This is actually a response to it. I received an email a while back from a gentleman named Ken, and he has a trike. And I'll just read this. This is the, the most recent email I got, which is a response to another email I sent him. But uh, he says, I emailed about a month ago on programming my second smart key for the 2018 Goldwing with a 22, 2022, I guess, gold, uh, Roadsmith conversion. So he has a Roadsmith trike. My question was, without the side bags, how can you complete the sequencing to program the smart key? Because part of the sequence to program the smart key is you have to open, I think, the left saddlebag. You have to open things in a sequence uh, as part of the, the process of programming that smart key. It was a very good question, and I didn't know the answer. Because when you have a trike, obviously, they remove the saddlebags. So there is no more switch for the saddlebag. Okay, uh, he did some reading, and by using the center trike door, it acts like the saddlebag button. So last night I watched your video, and instead of pushing the saddlebag button, I pressed the trike lower center door button, and it worked the first time. And he just wanted to drop me a note to let me know that. So if you have a trike, and you are needing to program a new smart key for your Goldwing, um, at least with a Roadsmith, this is how it's done. Uh, you probably are going to have to check with your particular manufacturer of your kit, maybe Hannigan or California Sidecar or whatever trike you have. But apparently it is doable. So that's the good news. Thank you, Ken, for updating me on that. I appreciate it. I'm sure everybody else will appreciate it that has a trike. Okay, this is from Dana. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the last name. So after watching another video on the Cardo Edge, I realized there might be a compatibility problem with the Goldwing. The Cardo Edge is using Bluetooth 5.2, whereas the Goldwing is using Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR. Obviously, Dana knows a lot more about the Bluetooth versions of the Goldwing than I do, because I was not aware of that. So this is most likely the reason everyone's been having pairing issues with the Edge. Now, I don't have an issue pairing to the Cardo. I haven't, well, I do have some issues, but the biggest issue I have is connectivity, and the same thing's true with the Senna. Every headset I've tried, uh, it's, it uh, is not consistent to, to connect every time I start up the bike and I start up the headset. It doesn't always connect the first time. So they, you know, he or she, I'm not sure which, goes on to say uh, Bluetooth versions are backwards compatible. Uh, if Cardo could do an update on the Edge to fix the Bluetooth disparity between 5.2 to 2.1, um, Dana, I appreciate what you're saying. I agree 100% with that. I don't see it happening. For some reason, uh, these Bluetooth headset companies do not 
perceive the Goldwing market to be that important to them. Uh, I've been trying to get this done for years. I've been trying to get them to update or patch or whatever they would have to do to get their headsets to connect better with the Goldwing. Uh, it just hasn't really been very... I have not been effective at my job, I guess. I can't get them to, to do it. But thank you for that information. It's good to know. I'm trying to look at the picture. Uh, I don't know. It's hard. The name Dana is kind of like the name Chris. You just don't know if it's a man or a woman. I think it is a man, but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, or maybe he identifies. I'm not going to get into that. Okay. Uh, this is from Kevin Velasco. Kevin, uh, would a 12-inch LP record fit in the side case? I buy and sell records and am interested in the Goldwing and was curious. Wow, and I replied to Kevin, and I told him I would go out that day and try that, and I forgot to do it. Um, does anybody know the answer to that? Can you put a, a, a long play vinyl record in the side saddlebag of a Goldwing? Uh, I will try it later. I just I forgot. I just forgot, Kevin. Maybe somebody else out there has done that or tried it. If so, please put it in the comments down below so we can let Kevin know the answer to that question. I don't think it will. Maybe if you angle it, it might. I'm not. It might fit if it's angled, but I don't know if it would fit flat up against the inside of that saddlebag. But that's just my just my guess. Okay, boy, these are long comments. Cruise Man watched all the videos you did comparing the two bikes. He's talking about, this is actually a comment on my comparison of the storage capacity of the Goldwing and the BMW. Extremely helpful, and the key thing you said that separated the two bikes for me was the performance aspect. I'm a performance-focused guy, even at my age, he's 56, so you made my decision. I just ordered the same exact bike you demoed, the 2022 BMW K1600 GTL with the same 719 option package. I'm not going to read the entire message. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, the only reason I, I pulled that comment is uh, <laughs> to get the attention of you manufacturers out there. People watch these videos and these videos do influence people to make purchasing decisions. Now, in this particular case, this gentleman, uh, West Vine Partners, is who posted the comment. Uh, I say gentleman. It could be a lady. I don't know. Uh, but he obviously, my video somehow influenced him to make a purchase of a brand new BMW. So I, I think he says here later on, it's $37,000 out the door. So I say that because uh, these videos can actually uh, drive sales. So for those of manufacturers out there that have been trying to get in touch with and you haven't been responding to me, um, hopefully you will. Okay, next comment from Corey Mortensen. I just bought a used 2019 Goldwing, my first one. I'm coming from a Harley Road Glide. I cannot thank you enough for your hard work in creating these fantastic videos. I've been in film and video production for 30 years and am impressed. Thank you. Uh, and to echo Jason Grant's comment, I would be it would be an honor to ride with you. I could make a documentary of how great you are. Wow. A documentary on how great I am. Wouldn't that be something? That shouldn't take long, uh, Corey. Uh, to, to make a documentary on how great I am, that would be a short, uh, I think they call it a short in the movie industry. So, um, but anyway, I appreciate that. Thank you for that nice comment. Uh, maybe someday you will uh, turn on Netflix and you'll see a documentary about Cruise Man. Wouldn't that be something? Okay, I don't hold your breath. Was that an, I, uh, this is from Mike Branscombe. Was that an iPhone charger in your center glove box? I thought you were an Android guy. Uh, well, Mike, I used to be an Android guy until a couple of years ago. I did uh, move to an iPhone, 
And so, yes, it is a lightning cable uh, iPhone connector for the uh, uh, for the you know the Bluetooth or whatever the connection is to the Goldwing for the cell phone. So yes, I do I have an iPhone 13 Pro. I shoot a lot of videos using that iPhone 13 Pro, and uh, I do use it on the motorcycle. Okay, last comment. Last comment. Ah, uh, this is from <laughs> Supernaut. And it starts as, as Midland. If I never see it again, I'll be happy. One of the most miserable places on earth. To which I replied, uh, you know, Supernaut, I grew up in Midland. I know how miserable it is. I could not wait to get the hell out of there. I can still remember when I drove outside it, drove in 1987 when I left West Texas to move to Dallas. I can still remember looking in the rear view mirror and I and and it's is a long story. I'm not going to get into the whole story, but I had about enough money to live for three months. I didn't have a career. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a business. I had no idea what I was going to do when I got to Dallas. I literally left with enough money in the bank to last me about three months to pay my rent, make my car payment. And I figured if I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail in a city where at least there are some decent restaurants, there's stuff to do, uh, stuff to see. And uh, long story on what happened after that once I got to Dallas. But uh, <laughs> I thought that was kind of a, a funny message. I guess he's been to Midland and was not impressed. So, but I do go back, I do go back a couple of times a year, two or three times a year to visit my brother because he still lives there. And he would, I think, completely agree uh, with this comment as well. He thinks it's a miserable place too. He just uh, feels like he's stuck there and can't get out. I wish he would. I wish he'd come up here. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for joining me today. I didn't drink much Crown, as you can tell. I've still got a finger left in here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish it. I just, you know, um, I'm trying to shake this thing. And it's the uh, the fatigue issue is what really is the, the tough part of this COVID thing. Uh, I, it's not like I feel terrible. I don't feel sick. I'm not coughing. I don't have... I don't have a splitting headache or any bad symptoms. I just, it's uh, it's just a, a, a fatigue, and it's just kind of hard to get motivated. And if you've had COVID, uh, or if you have it now, maybe you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've gone through something similar. So anyway, I want to thank you for joining me. More videos will be coming your way. And if you enjoyed this video, please take a second to click that like button down below because that makes a huge difference in our YouTube statistics and YouTube rankings. And it helps YouTube determine which videos like ours that they present to people that are not subscribers. So anyway, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for clicking the like button. And I will see you on the next Crown and Comments.